devotee of the Lord is a reservoir of all good qualities, of great personality. His character and activities have delivered all the fallen members of his demoniac family. Lord Nishrinibane is very dear to this exalted personality. Thus Prahlad Maharaj, along with his servants and all the denizens of Haribash, worships Lord Nishrinibane by chanting the following mantra. The Port Srila Prabhupada. Jai Devi Goswami's ten prayers worshipping the incarnation of Lord Krishna, Keshava, contain his name in every stanza. For example, Keshava Dvita Narahari Rupa Jai Jagadish Hare, Keshava Dvita Meena Shadeva Jai Jagadish Hare, and Keshava Dvita Vamana Rupa Jai Jagadish Hare. The word Jai Jagadish sorry, the word Jagadisha refers to the proprietor of all the universes. His original form is the two-handed form of Lord Krishna, standing with a flute in his hands and engaged in tending the cows. As stated in the Brahma Samhita, Kimtamani Prakarasatma Sukkarna Vriksha Laksa Vriteshu Suravira Vipalayantam Lakshmi Shahasra Sata Sambrama Sayyamanam Govinda Mari Purisham Namaham Pajami I worship Govinda, the primeval Lord, the first progenitor who is tending the cows, yielding all desires, in a boat built with spiritual gems and surrounded by millions of purpose trees. He is always served with great reverence and affection by hundreds and thousands of goddesses of fortune. From this verse, we learn that Govinda, or Krishna, is Adi Purusha, the original person. The Lord has innumerable incarnations, exactly like the innumerable waves of a flowing river. But the original form is Krishna, or Keshava. Sugadev Goswami refers to Nishrinadev because of Prahlad Maharaj. Prahlad Maharaj was put into great distress by his powerful father, the, the demon, Hirani Gajibu. Apparently helpless before him, Prahlad Maharaj called on the Lord, who immediately assumed the form, the gigantic form of Nishinidev, half lion and half man, to kill the gigantic demon. Although Krishna is the original person, one without a second, he assumes different forms just to satisfy his devotees or to execute a specific purpose. Therefore, Jayate Goswami always repeats the name of Keshava, the original personality of Godhead, in his prayers, describing the Lord's different incarnations for different purposes. So Prabhupada, he refers to Jayate Goswami, we, we chant every day, uh, that actually is part of the uh, Gita Govinda, it's the beginning of the Gita Govinda, Jaya Goswami, um, he evoke, invokes the blessings of Keshava in all his incarnations to set an auspicious mood for the uh, very intimate discussion of Krishna's pastimes. So, that um, prayer is very important. The Gita Govinda is one of the books that Lord Chaitanya was very keen to hear with his intimate associates. So it is available now, and uh, there are recordings of all the songs. The Gita Govinda takes the form of bhajans throughout. So it is a wonderful literature that we should be also eager to study. So in this verse is mentioned the wonderful quality and character, 
sorry, character and activities of uh, Pralad Maharaj and how he, through that wonderful activity and character, delivered all the fallen members of even his most demoniac family. So that is something to remember that uh, the devotee who is established in Krishna praying, he delivers generation after generation of his family. So if you really love your parents, become a good devotee. You're doing the best thing for them. So we'll move on today. And the verse here says that thus Prahlad Maharaj, um, along with his servants and all the denizens of Harivaj, worship Lord Vishnu by chanting this mantra. So a very poor mantra. Uh, and it's very important to understand. Hirani Kashipu was uh, defeated by Nashrinidev. So Hirani Kashipu, as we'll read in Prabhupada's purport, uh, represents the gross materialist. He wants Hiranya, gold and soft bed, Kashipu. So these things are anathas that trouble devotees, hankering for material opulences and uh, sex life. So this is a pastime that if we study and understand and we chant this mantra, then these are nathas that beset us in our sadhana, in our practice, uh, the desire for opulence in the material world and sex life. If we chant this mantra, with sincerity, then just like Lord Nishrinidev killed Hirani Kashipu, so simply this mantra will evoke, uh, invoke Lord Nishrinidev and he will kill uh, our desires for mundane opulence and mundane sex life. So this is a, a technique. Don't underestimate the power of these mantras. If you are troubled in any way by anyabhilasita, hankering for material opulence, and if sexual agitation comes upon, you can meditate upon the pastime, this particular pastime of Hiranyakashipu being defeated by Nishrinyade, and this will cleanse your heart. So, um, don't uh, suffer in silence, rather use these practical methods because the pastimes of the Supreme Lord, they contain his particular potencies, as it Prabhupada mentioned there at the end of the report. So different incarnations and different leelas have or evoke specific potencies. So the defeat of Hirani Gashibu can take place in your heart by chanting and worshipping Lord Vishrinide, particularly through this mantra. So you can chant it in a daily way. So uh, please repeat after me. Om Namo Bhagavate Narishrikaya Say of here, of here, Papa. Vrajinaka, Vrajinamstra, Karma Shrayan. Bye. 
devotees always engaged in the service of the toes of the Lord's lotus feet can very easily become free from hard-hearted desires for fruitive activities. Because this is very difficult, the non-devotees, the jnanis and yogis, cannot stop the waves of sense gratification, although they try to do so. Therefore, you are advised to engage in the devotional service of Krishna, the son of Vasudeva. Every living entity within this material world has a strong desire to enjoy matter to his fullest satisfaction. For this purpose, the conditioned soul must accept one body after another, and thus his strongly fixed fruitive desires continue. One cannot stop the repetition of birth and death without being completely desirous. Therefore, Srila Rupa Goswami describes pure bhakti, devotional service, as follows. Anyavilasika sunya, jnana karmadi anavrita, anupuyena krishnadu, shilanam bhakti rutama. One should render transcendental loving service to the Supreme Lord, Krishna, favorably and without desire for material profit or gain through fruitive activities or philosophical speculations. That is called pure devotional service. Unless one is completely free from all material desires, can you be a little over there in the Russian section? Can you be a little more quieter, whoever is speaking? It's very distracting. Unless one is completely freed of all material desires which are caused by the dense darkness of ignorance, one cannot fully engage in the devotional service of the Lord. Therefore, we should always offer our prayers to Lord Rishnagade, who killed Irani Kashipu the personification of material desire. Hiranya means gold and Kashipu means a soft cushion or bed. Materialistic persons always desire to make the body comfortable and for this they require huge amounts of gold. Thus Hirani Kashipu was the perfect representative of materialistic life. He was therefore the cause of great disturbance to the topmost devotee, Prahlad Maharaj, until Lord Rishikadev killed him. Any devotee aspiring to be free from material desires should offer his respectful prayers to Rishikadev as Prahlad Maharaj did in this verse. So, Bhakam Karoti Bhachalam Pampam Maite Yakri Patamam Bande Shri Guru Minatarinam Om Namo Bhagavate Narasimhaya Okay, <laughs> why not? We'll do it again. Om Namo Bhagavate Narasimhaya Please appear in our hearts 
and drive away our ignorance so that by your mercy we may become fearless in the struggle for existence in this material world. So, uh, we can understand why Srila Prabhupada um, got us to chant, instructed us to chant uh, the, the part of the Gita Govinda every day. From this verse we see that Lord Rishrinidev is particularly powerful for vanquishing material desires. In the verse, Prabhupada quoted the definition given by Rupa Goswami in the Bhakti Rasamrita Sangha of pure devotion. And Yadi Lasita Sunyam, Jnana Kalmadi Anavritam, Anukuyena Krishnadu, Shivanam Bhakti Uttama. So this verse is in two sections. First is given the obstacles to pure devotion. And Yadi Lasita, it means hankering for material facility, material enjoyment, material opulence, hankering. Also, um, this is one of the four anathas. We hear anatha nrivriti. But in the Jaivanara Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he clearly delineates the four divisions of anatha. And so the first anatha is this anyabi lasika, the behind of material opulence. The uh, next two uh, anathas divisions are given also in here, jnana. And that means the desire, jnana mishra bhakti, and also the desire for merging into the existence of the Supreme Lord. Uh, this is an obstacle to pure devotion. If you read natural devotion closely, and it's also mentioned in uh, Anuchya uh, 10 of the Priti Sandhara, that people who desire two things in their worship, these two things are Aishwarya and Sukha. They want the happiness of the spiritual world and they want the opulence of the spiritual world. So they take Vaikuddha Murtina. They go to the uh, Vaikuntha Lokas where Narayan is manifest. So they are devotees but they have a desire to enjoy the opulence of the spiritual world and also the bliss, the happiness. So it's very interesting to consider that, that the Supreme Lord, if you are a devotee, He will even take you to the Vaikuntha Lokas to fulfill your desire. But those desires are not the desires for material happiness or material opulence, but rather the devotee is maintaining in his sadhana uh, a hankering uh, for the happiness or an attraction for the happiness and the opulence of even the spiritual platform. So the Lord fulfills that desire but one attains a Vaikuntha Murtina. So the Acharyas have explained that this is the form of Narayan. So the devotees they take, you can read about this in the second canto of the Bhagavatam, description of the kingdom of God. The devotees they take the form of Narayan and they enjoy great opulence and happiness in Narayan. However, 
the residents of Golok Vrindavan, they regard this happiness in Vaikuntha, in the Vaikuntha Lokas, where Narayan, the shelter of all souls, is manifest. They consider this to be a very terrible existence because they are completely engrossed, uh, enchanted, is a better word, uh, enamored by the beauty and sweetness of Krishna, Keshava. So, this is the special contribution of Lord Chaitanya and the six Goswamis and the descendants to bring forward the perfection of bhakti, which is completely free of any anchoring material or spiritual, other than the satisfaction of the Supreme Lord Keshava. So, Lord Chaitanya and the six Goswamis in this line have elucidated and presented the gopis of Vrindavan, the Manjaris, the Prophet quotes that Chaitanya Prakarasadva too, as the exemplars of this completely selfless devotion. So we are especially blessed to be in this line and to have the Acharyas explain the highest form of devotion, the highest, clearest form. And even though this is Kali Yuga, the most fallen age, the most wonderful position in the spiritual world is available by the mercy of body time. So that means that if we grasp this knowledge, this understanding presented by the Acharyas and the Supreme Lord Himself, then we should take advantage, we should become enthusiastic in this direction uh, because we have this uh, before us and we should dedicate our life to the achievement of this goal. So, Bhakti Vinod Thakur, in his Shikshamrita, he explains, and also his Nam Hat, he explains that the devotee is like a businessman. A businessman, he gains some profit, and then he reinvests that profit. And then he gains more profit, and then he has more profit to reinvest. So similarly, the devotee, he has a certain amount of bhakti, a certain amount of faith in Krishna and the Acharyas, the disciplic succession. So Bhakti Vinoda he explains that with that amount of devotion, he should pray to the Lord for more devotion. And then, by the grace of Guru, Parampara, and Sri Krishna, Lord Chaitanya, you will be given some more devotion. And then you should reinvest that devotion. So, we are in the process of constantly reinvesting our devotion every day, every moment. With whatever devotion we have, we should approach the Supreme Lord and His devotees and pray for more. And this, uh, Bhakti Vinod Thakur explains, is Lodha. We have everything. We have Vrindavan Dham, we have the Bhagavatam, we have the Bhav Mantra, we have the guidance of the great Acharya, Srila Prabhupada, and Bhakti Vinod Thakur, Sad Goswami, all the great acharyas, we have all the literature wonderfully explained, but we must have the hankering. We must have the hankering. 
So this Anya Vilasika, which is mentioned here as the uh, Ananatha, and mentioned here by Rupa Goswami, is the misdirection of this anchoring. The soul is a power station. It is full of consciousness. That consciousness is expressed uh, as desire. Huh? But in the material world, that desire, that hankering, is called calm, lust, because that hankering is for one's selfish enjoyment. So the lota and the anyabilasita, properly directed, means to hanker for the satisfaction and the happiness of the beloved. Sri Krishna and all his most intimate devotees. So this is how we actually invest our bhakti. We invest our bhakti with the desire so that this is explained by Bhakti Vinod Thakur, so that we can, with more devotion, be able to please the Supreme Lord. He explains, a devotee may ask, well, I'm desiring uh, to go to the spiritual world. I'm desiring to uh, please, uh, to increase my devotion. Yes. But why do we want to develop our spiritual form? And why do we want to develop our devotion? We want to make this progress because then we will be in a better situation to please the Supreme Lord and His devotees. Huh? So this is the proper hanker. We should not hanker for the opulence of Vaikuntha, the bliss of Vaikuntha. There is an example there in the nectar of devotion of one devotee who was fanning the Supreme Lord. You know his name? Duruka, I think. Duruka. And so he was feeling such ecstasy in fanning the Supreme Lord that his hand was shaking and he wasn't able to fan properly. So he cursed that bliss. Get away from me. Get away. It's interfering with my service. <coughs> so this example is given by Rupa Goswami so that we understand this. That our final hankering is the service of Krishna and Krishna's devotee. And not so that we get some exchange, but rather so that the Supreme Lord will be pleased. And therefore that is also presented in the final uh, verse of the Shikshastaka, right? As Krishna Padaratam Pranishnamam. Supreme Lord, whether you embrace me or trample me, huh? that makes no difference. But you are always my Supreme. You are always the object of my devotion. So this is the essence of the bhakti taught by Lord Chaitanya. It is completely selfless. The only desire is the satisfaction of the Supreme Lord. And so if we understand this, then we will have a greater insight into the Leela of Krishna. Hmm? Tattva, Rasa Tattva and Sambandha Gyan, these are very important things. If we understand the philosophical Siddhanta, then we understand how to direct our consciousness, how to direct our ability to anger. Just like a cricket match. If you don't know the laws of cricket, 
and you watch a cricket match, then you don't understand what's going on. Huh? Not that you should be overly concerned. <laughs> but if you go to a cricket match and you say you're from America, and they play, what's it called, baseball. It's a very base game. Anyway, baseball. So you come and you watch a cricket match. What's going on? After 20 minutes, you get a headache trying to figure it out. And after 20 minutes, you want to look around and forget the game. Because you have no insight into the culture of cricket, the rules of cricket. So you don't know what's happening. So the beginning business of Bhakti Sadhana is to gain all Sambandagyan. Huh? Sambandagyan, what is that? Hari Ishwara. Supreme Lord is the controller. Hari, Hari, Radha Krishna. Then a Chitya Shakti is possessed of inconceivable range of Shakti energies. Then he is Rasabai Saha. He is the embodiment of all the marrows and tastes. These are the three points of Sambandagyan in regard to Krishna, the Mula. Then Jiva Angsa, the living entity, is his fragmental yet independent part. And then the living entity is found in the conditioned state, but he is also uh, possible to go into the transcendental state. And then the final point of Sambandagyan, that all these energies of Krishna, the Chit Shakti, ruled over by ultimately Srimati Radharani, and then the Ajit Shakti, ruled over by Durga Devi, and the Supreme Lord and his Jiva Shakti, these are the four divisions uh, of transcendence and the creation, the Supreme Lord, the material energy, the spiritual energy, and the Jiva Shakti. This is, so if you understand that, but what? The final point is a Chichu Veda Veda. So this is Sambandhatattva in root form. If we understand that, and then we understand Abhideya Tattva, how to worship Krishna on the basis of this, and we understand Prayoja Tattva, what is the necessity, what is the goal. If we are fully aware of these Siddhantas, these Tattvas, then we have entrance into the Leela of Krishna. Like we discussed a few uh, couple of weeks ago, that Krishna is Mukta. He is appearing as uh, Mina Swaru. He's appearing as a fish. He's appearing as a boar. And he's engaging in pastimes in this way. And he's engaging in pastimes with the gopis and on the battlefield of Kurukshetra. And he's completely enchanted by Yogamaya into this Leela. <coughs> so if we understand the Tattva and we understand the this verse and Yavilasita Sonya, what is pure devotion, then we can properly direct our understanding of Tattva. So the other time is very short. <laughs> Two verses. So yes, um, we can learn so much data from Bhagavad Gita about the three modes of material nature, about the nature of material reality by the policy of the Supreme Lord. And through that, we can have a great comprehension of the material creation. You can read the newspaper and you can say, oh, this is karma, this is that, this is material, and so on. You can, under you can see into the material energy. 
However, the real purpose of philosophy and understanding Tattva and Rupa Goswami's uh, and the purports of Srila Prabhupada is so that you can see into the transcendental Leela. You understand? Yes, from Bhagavad Gita and also from Bhagavatam, you can gain, gain great intelligence and knowledge and you will be able to see the material world for what it is. But do not stay on that platform. Use that understanding, that philosophical knowledge to see into the transcendental Leela. The Leela of the Srimad Bhagavatam. The <coughs> transcendental Leela, the entrance to transcendental Leela is through the Srimad Bhagavatam. Puranika Adranodina. So, this is a very important point. We can learn so much philosophy and we can have so much knowledge and intelligence on the basis of this philosophy, but we must apply it to understanding ultimately the transcendental leader of Krishna. Because it is by understanding and becoming absorbed in that transcendental leader, we realize Krishna. And the goal of Krishna Consciousness is exactly that. To realize Krishna directly and personally within one's own heart, within one's own consciousness. And then one is fit for the association of Krishna and Krishna's devotees. Huh? So the realization of Krishna is through the Srimad Bhagavatam with the great knowledge given in the Srimad Bhagavatam and the Bhagavad Gita and the natural devotion, then we can actually become absorbed in the Leela. We should be very careful that when we perform Bhakti Sadhana, yes, we will come to the mode of goodness and then we will get a sense of satisfaction and happiness. And this may make us uh, satisfied in a very lower platform. Uh, we may think, oh, before I was suffering in the material world, now it's, I'm fearless, now I have knowledge, I'm living life purely. We may become complacent, but we should use that uh, touch of the mode of goodness to which the mode of goodness uh, shows things as they are. It reveals reality to the person so situated. But we should be progressive. We are in this material world, this material realm, but we should not use the mode of goodness to understand the politics and the affairs of the material world. We should use that mode of goodness and our philosophical insight to and apply it to the Leela of Krishna. And the Srimad Bhagavatam is specially constructed for this purpose, to give insight into the transcendental Leela. In the Srimad, uh, in the Gita, what is the center of the Gita? The universal form. Arjuna perceives Krishna within the material world as the Virat Rupa, how everything is resting upon him. But it is a very terrible vision. Huh? It is Mrityu Sarva Harascharam. It is ever the devouring nature of the material energy. So that should not be our preoccupation with our learning. Rather, what is the center of the Srimad Bhagavatam? That is the Raslila. The Raslila uh, 
is is the dance of Krishna with every soul in transcendence. Srimati Radharani and Krishna are within the circle and Krishna is expanding to dance with every devotee, with every gopi. So this Leela, just like Lord Nishrindadev's Leela has symbolic and also philosophical aspect, so this Leela, the Ras Leela, explains that Krishna wants to dance with every soul. And he expands, he's already expanded within the heart of everybody as the Supersoul. In the transcendental world, Krishna expands and personally, uh, it is explained in the Upanishads, in the commentary of Baladevi Vibhushan in the Vedanta Sutra, that in the spiritual world, and the actual soul rests upon Krishna, sees through Krishna, hears through Krishna, that everything is resting upon the Supreme Lord. Baladeva explains that in the Vedanta Sutra, quoting the Upanishads and the corresponding verses. So we have to understand the spiritual world. And the Srimad Bhagavatam is especially designed in a progressive manner to lead us to that perfection where we become absorbed in thought of Krishna in transcendence. We want to realize uh, Keshava in Golok Prindal. So this is a very important point, that we should know the final point. And we should hanker for that position, not for our opulence or our happiness, because in that position we can properly satisfy Krishna and Krishna's devotees. So we should hanker for that. And that is the devotion we should invest in our prayer to Krishna, in our Lokta. So, uh, the other, like I say, the other four divisions are Jnana, this uh, desire to merge into Krishna. Karmani, and the other uh, division of Anatha is that we want to get some material fruit. So these are things are in the material and even in the spiritual practice. The other division of Aparad that Rupa Goswami gives is Aparad. This is also a basic Anatha. The Nam Aparad, Seva Aparad, Dham Aparad. These Aparad, they slow us. But then here, as final point, Anukuliena Krishna Rukshiranam Bhakti Rukutama. Utama, Bhakti Rutama. So this is the highest bhakti. So Rupa Goswami here, we should always remember this point. That what is bhakti? Ultimately, it is just Shivanam Bhakti Krishnani. It is a favorable disposition to Krishna. We are in the material world, at least myself, because of an unfavorable attitude towards the Supreme Lord. Huh? It is called Andha Tamishra. It is a rebellious attitude to the superiority of the Supreme Lord. An inability to accept His supremacy. And a rebellion against that supremacy. But, Krishna Anu means that we joyfully accept the supremacy of Sri Krishna and favorably. So try to understand bhakti in that very simple essence. It is simply a favorable attitude towards Sri Krishna. And it is unmixed by any desire, this is taught by Lord Chaitanya, for spiritual opulence, spiritual merging, material fruit. The only hankering 
is the satisfaction of the Supreme Lord. And we mentioned the Rasleena, we should always remember that when the gopis, they heard the flute song of Krishna, they rushed to see Krishna. But we, if we have tattva, philosophical understanding, then we know they rushed to see Krishna, not for their own enjoyment, but rather they heard the flute song of Krishna and they thought, ah, Krishna wants our association. Let us go there and please him. They didn't go there to enjoy Krishna. They went there to serve Krishna. So we should not, we should not confuse material selfish motivation with the residence of the transcendental abode. In this material world, we are suffering with calm, with lusting for our own satisfaction. But praying means the satisfaction of Krishna and Krishna's devotees. So to attain that, this, this mantra is very practical. What is holding us back? What are the anathas? We should not think, oh, I'm a big yogi, I can tighten the coping and I can overcome everything and I'll eat two chickpeas every month and I'll be powerful and strong. Yes. No, we should enlist the help of Lord Nishinine. And just as the gopis heard the flute song of Krishna, so the acharyas, Prabhupada and all acharyas have explained that in the material world, the flute song of Krishna is manifest as what? Huh? Yes, the Maha Mantra, see you are all learning devotees. Yes, the flute song is manifest as the Maha Mantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. So we chant Hare Krishna, the Kirtan, not for our pleasure, but for the pleasure of Sri Sri Gauri Thai, Krishna Balaram, Radhisham, Sandalali, Vishar, Vishagra Maharaj, Gil Govardhan, Sri Guru Parampara, Ki Jai. So we'll finish on that point. If there's a quick question, we'll try to answer. So this is favorable devotion. Remember this. Self-motivation for enjoyment through spiritual life is not, in the purest sense, favorable devotion. So remember this strict point taught by Lord Chaitanya. You cultivate and you hanker for the satisfaction of Krishna. Why do you come to the temple for darshan? Now, without tattva, you may be thinking, oh, look at the beauty of Krishna. It's a nice kirtan. I'll sit down. When I sit down, I get some bliss. And people think I'm playing nicely. You may be leading the kirtan. And everyone thinks I'm very wonderful and I know everything. That is not favorable devotion. You come to the temple to, with nice clean cloth for Krishna's pleasure. You sit down in the kirtan for Krishna's pleasure. Huh? Then you are entering the transcendental realm. You understand? Because you are doing for Krishna. If you, you can spend many hundreds of lifetimes in bhakti sadhana thinking this is good for me. But if you're thinking this is good for me, then you must stay on the other side of the tatta. You must stay on the material side. And Krishna will fulfill that desire. Yes, he likes to enjoy kirtan. Let him enjoy kirtan. Let him enjoy being a famous kirtaniya. Let him be famous for giving Bhagavatam class. Why do you give Bhagavatam class? To glorify your own knowledge 
or to glorify Krishna. To glorify Krishna. Yeah. This is the whole point. This is the key point. The Seva Bhav. We must develop Seva Bhav to Krishna. That I'm using my mind, my intelligence, my abilities for His pleasure. And this must be our absorption. And we must have that desire. Because Krishna will fulfill your desire. Huh? So in this mantra, the obstacles for that natural state are, uh, by this mantra, the anathas that keep us trapped in this desire for hiranya and kashipu, huh? they can be vanquished in this way. So let us, before we have nice prashad, and now there's another thing, uh, when you take prashad, it's a way of, is it a way of enjoyment or is it a way of glorifying Krishna? Glorifying. glorifying Krishna. So we have this habit of doing things for ourselves and therefore we're in this horrible material world. We must develop the desire to do things for Krishna and the obstacles will be defeated if we daily chant this mantra. So let us chant one more time. Om Namo Bhagavate Narasimhaya Om Namo Bhagavate Narasimhaya Namaste Jaste Jaste Abhir Abhir Bhava Namaste Jaste Jaste Abhir Abhir Bhava Vrajranaka Vrajranamsta Oh, uh -huh.